Electron affinity is the energy that is associated with adding an electron to an atom. And so in this video, we're going to look at the electron affinity trend, which means that we're going to look at the trend of the energy associated with the process of adding electrons to atoms. Let's review a little bit. So we've talked about, and we've also reviewed, that one of the characteristics of an atom is that the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons. And a few videos ago, I introduced you to the concept of an ion, which is where we have a particle that has an unequal number of protons and electrons. And in that particular video, I was talking specifically about cations, cations, which are ions where the number of protons is greater than the the number of electrons. And that happened by ionization or removing electrons. Now we're talking about adding electrons, electron affinity. These types of ions have extra electrons, so the number of protons is less than the number of electrons. And these types of ions are called anions. So let's take a look at an example of an anion. The example that I'm going to use for this is fluorine. We're going to start with fluorine as an atom. So when we're looking at the fluorine atom, the fluorine atom has nine protons. And because it's an atom, it also has nine electrons. The fluorine ion, so as an ion, we still have nine protons because that is what makes it fluorine, but instead we have 10 electrons. Because we have an unequal number of protons and electrons, this particle, this ion is charged. We have nine positively charged particles and we have 10 negatively charged particles. So we have one more negatively charged particle than positively charged particles, which means that we have a charge of minus one. In the uh, couple videos ago, I talked about how the symbol for this ion cannot be F. The symbol F represents the fluorine atom. And so uh, much like what we saw in a previous video, the symbol is going to have the charge written in the upper right hand corner. When the charge is one, one plus or one minus, a lot of times we just write the minus sign or the plus sign instead of writing one plus or one minus. Also, this ion cannot be referred to as fluorine because fluorine is the name that we give to the atom. So the name of this particle has to change as well. Now for anions, for negatively charged ions, we actually change the ending of the atom's name. So instead of calling it fluorine, we call this fluoride, and then we do sometimes say ion at the end. So when we're going from an atom to an anion, we change the ending of the name to ide. Let's look at a couple of other examples. Oxygen as an atom becomes oxide as an anion. Chlorine as an atom becomes chloride. And we'll see a few more examples of this as well, so you'll have an opportunity to practice changing the ending of the name. Um, so let's talk about the trend of, of, of electron affinity. If we are using this rectangle to represent the periodic table, this is our periodic table right here. The trend of electron affinity increases as we go up a column, and it also increases as we go from left to right. The electron affinity trend, we increase as we go up, and we also increase as we go to the right. And this is just literally following the effective nuclear charge trend following ENC or ZEFF. And it makes, it makes perfect sense if we understand effective nuclear charge. Effective nuclear charge is basically a measure of, in terms of the outer electrons, how much the outer electrons are detecting the nucleus. If you have a very high effective nuclear charge, the electrons that are out here on the outside 
of an atom, they are really feeling that nucleus, the positive charge. And so other electrons that might be kind of in the vicinity, they're going to be drawn into this situation because this nucleus is really attractive to the outer electrons. So when you have a high effective nuclear charge, you've basically got big pull to draw in random extra electrons that might be floating around.